Well, we had a big signing tonight, and so I wanted to do a video. I wanted to bring up my brand new magnet and uh, wear the 80s version of the, the St. Louis jersey for this and one of the hats I have because, you know, for all the accusations of how much I hate the team, it, it's weird because I have all this St. Louis gear and St. Louis magnets and this is brand new. So, hey, if it's going to make its debut, it might as well be in a video about Jordan Bennington signing a six-year extension. So, it's an interesting extension in that it's it's a pretty smart move for both the player and the team and it, it's a high price for Bennington considering where he's at right now with his numbers but it makes a lot of sense it makes a lot of sense for him to want to stay in stay in St. Louis and it makes a lot of sense for St. Louis to want to keep him around um, he's been the better of the two goaltenders this year between he and Ville Husso and there isn't really any plan to replace him and shouldn't be so what's interesting is this is a contract that three or four years ago nobody would have seen this coming and he was drafted 88th overall in 2011. And he was seen as kind of a failure at certain points about five years ago. And he refused an ECHL assignment. They were like, oh, we're going to send you to the East Coast League. And he's like, nope. Which, that's something that can get you traded. That's something that absolutely at the time, if St. Louis had said, you know what, we're going to trade Bennington. He's not, he needs to learn, you know, that, that when we tell you you're going somewhere, you're going. They didn't trade him. But he ended up replacing Chad Johnson as the backup in 2018-2019. So they brought Johnson in as the backup, making $1.75 million. He was going to back up Jake Allen. And Johnson, it didn't work out at all. So uh, they, they were moving goalies around. But what's interesting is on September 22nd of 2018, they waived Jordan Bennington. Any team in the league could have had him for free. But up until that point, he'd only played one game. That was in 2015-2016. He saved three out of four shots in the game that he played. It wasn't a start. He'd never started in the NHL. So when you're looking at a goaltender that's seven years out from his draft year, he's never started a game, you can probably sneak him through waivers. It's probably not that difficult. What's interesting is that he became the rookie of the month, February and March, once he finally got a chance to play. And what was interesting, too, was they weren't playing him. So he was there... They weren't playing him. They didn't have any faith in him. And and it took a while before they finally did. And then when they did, they looked they looked like geniuses for putting him in the net. He ends up 24-5-1 over 32 games. 927 save percentage, which was fourth in the NHL. Five shutouts, which was sixth. Of course, he wins 16 games in the playoffs to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, 914 save percentage to get there. He ends up fifth in Vesna voting. And I believe it was second in voting for Calder that year. And yeah. A star is born. Now, this past year, it's there's been some rocky roads for him. Now, 2019-2020, he did play in the All-Star game. Plays 50 games in the, the shortened season where we had the COVID shutdown at this time last year. Uh, 30 wins, which was third in the NHL. 13 losses, 7 overtime or shootout losses. His save percentage dropped to 912. 3 shutouts, which was 8th. And then in the return to play, he struggled. He ends up 0-5, an 851 save percentage. But all things considered... He ends up 7th in Vesna voting for the season. And you, you kind of have to give the guy a little bit of a mulligan because he did win the Stanley Cup the year before. And he was a huge part of the reason that St. Louis did win it. You can make the argument that Ryan O'Reilly was the MVP. You can easily make the argument that Bennington was the MVP as well. So 2020-2021 thus far at the time that he's signing this contract as of right now. He's played 19 games. He's got nine wins, six losses, and three overtime or shootout losses. His, his numbers, 908 save percentage and no shutouts yet. I don't know that Bennington's a top 10 goalie in the league. I know that he could be. I know that he's only 27 years of age. So he's got, you've got to think, six good years. Uh, Carey Price right now is 33. So that would be the age where this contract, well, this contract would expire likely when he's 34 because it kicks in next year. So it kicks in next season. But it's not a huge raise. Like right now, his cap hit is $4.4 million. Next year, his cap hit is $6 million. Now, the salaries are, are varied. Why, not, not too wildly because you're not allowed anymore. Starts at $4 million and ends up peaking at $7.5 million, I believe, and then it drops towards the end of it. So there's some playing around with the numbers, but it still averages out to $6 million a year. I didn't see any signing bonuses in it either. It's got a, a, a full no-trade clause for the first three years. And then it has a modified no-trade in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth year. Uh, he can give an 18-team no-trade list in 
25-26, it could be a 14-team list. And 26-27, it would be a 10-team list. So in the event that, say, four years from now, this just isn't working, they can trade him. He has some say in where he goes, but they can trade him. There, there really is no downside to this if you're St. Louis. Um, because, again, you know he has proven that he's an NHL goaltender. Like I said, I don't know if he's going to be top 10. He's capable of going on a run. I don't know that he ever wins another Stanley Cup, but he's got a Stanley Cup ring, and he's the St. Louis goaltender that got them to the Stanley Cup. You can't lose him. And the options out there to replace him with this coming summer, likely not nearly as attractive as the idea of just keep Bennington and keep him happy. So uh, he gets a good contract. Uh, comparable would be uh, the Markstrom contract in uh, Calgary. He doesn't get the full no-movement clause, but it's not like they're going to leave him exposed for Seattle either. So no concerns there. It's an interesting career, 63 wins, 24 regulation losses, and 11 losses in overtime or shootouts, 915 save percentage, 8 career shutouts, and of course, he has 16 wins in his playoff career that got him a Stanley Cup. So, kudos to him, very good job in taking a career that again, 4 years ago, forgotten. Bennington, Bennington, he's, he's not going to make it, this is not going to happen. Hey, they tried sending him to the ECHL, he wouldn't take it. And now, he never has to worry about that again. So he doesn't look nervous. I know there are people who don't necessarily like Bennington because of his, his temperament, but goaltenders, over my life, I've known goaltenders to either be crazy, temperamental, uh, or, or just flat out weird. Uh, it seems like this generation of goaltenders, you don't see that as much, but it was pretty standard not that long ago. So, you know, I, I, I have to say, uh, I think it's a good job by the Blues. They only lose $1.6 in cap space by keeping them around, which isn't really that bad, uh, as they'll have some, some freedom to move things around this summer. And they want to keep winning. So they believe that in order to do so, they need to keep Bennington. Let me know your thoughts on this contract in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing right through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.